The man slept in a freezer for 500 years and woke up to find the earth drastically changed. Cities are in disrepair. Buildings are leaning and tied up with ropes. Breaches are broken and unrepaired. A car crashes under a bridge, and the movie that won eight Oscars turned out to be a movie called S. It turns out that all humans nowadays have low IQs, and intelligent people have become an extinct species. The story takes place 500 years ago, and people with high IQs don't want children, while people with low IQs do the opposite. Having a litter in their lifetime, this has led to the human races, IQ getting lower and lower. So the government started the hibernation program, freezing the highly intelligent people in boxes to prevent the human race from going in the direction of memory retardation. Jake, the main character, is an American soldier who is lucky enough to be one of the first experimental subjects, and along with him is a woman named Lisa. Soon the two began the experiment and go into complete hibernation. The experiment doesn't go well, and soon after the two are frouncing, the head of the program is arrested by the military for corruption, and the lab is dismantled along with him. Due to the complete secrecy of this experiment, the demand's cryostat was left in ruins. 500 years passed, and their former lab was turned into a huge mountain of garbage. The mountain of garbage collapses, and a tsunami of garbage pours into the city. Jake wakes up and is thrown out by Mike. He sees the terrible streets and wonders, but people can't even speak clearly. He finds a hospital where the doctor can't tell the equipment apart and shoves an endoscope in his mouth. Jake rinses his mouth and realizes that what's coming out is a drink. He sees a magazine and realizes he's been asleep for 500 years. Upon returning to the streets, he realizes that the whole world has been taken over by stupid people. Jake is arrested by the police because he has no it. The judge looks retarded and worries Jake. His defense attorney turns out to be Mike, who not only fails to defend him, but aggravates his guilt and charges him with breaking and entering and interrupting someone watching TV. In the end, Jake was found guilty. Prior to his incarceration, Jake was given an IQ test. If there are two liters of water in the first bucket and five liters of water in the second bucket, how many buckets are there? Jake answered without confidence. Two? Thank you. He couldn't believe that after 500 years, all human beings had become fools. Freshly in prison, Jake boldly approached the prison guard and said, I've served my time and I'm getting out today. The guard points to the exit and it's the most enjoyable prison break ever. Jake then finds Mike and learns that there is a time machine in this era. They fool Lisa into leading the way through the streets in search of the time machine, only to be discovered by the police. Soon, Mike's car runs out of juice and they have to get out and run away with the cops in hot pursuit. One cop even uses a bazooka only to blow the airplane out of the sky. In the end, Jake is caught by the police for not catching the subway. But this time, instead of being sent to jail, he was taken to the White House. A previous IQ test shows that Jake is the smartest man in the world, and the president wants to rehire him. However, when he arrives at the White House, he finds that the officials are all oddballs. The Secretary of Energy is a child, the Secretary of Defense is fat, the Attorney General is a buxom girl, and the Secretary of Education doesn't seem to bright. Even more outrageous is the fact that the president became president by virtue of being a five-time wrestling champion. The president then, appoints Jake as Secretary of the Interior and tells him to solve the problem of crops that won't grow or he'll send him to God. In order to save his life, he stiffly agrees to first find Mike to draw a map to find the time machine and then find Lisa. The two ostensibly examine the crops but in fact discuss how to escape to find the time machine. Jake doesn't realize that Mike's map is not recognizable at all. As the two men return, Jake overhears that these idiots are using drinks to irrigate their crops and it would be strange if they could grow anything. After some inquiries, he learns that water in this era has been completely replaced by beverages, and people can't do anything without beverages, washing their cars with beverages, and irrigating their land with beverages, while their water is only used to flush the toilet. After that, Jake ordered to stop the use of beverages, and use water to irrigate crops. However, his actions certainly offended the beverage group, because the discontinuation of the beverage led to a sharp decline in sales. Half of the employees were laid off, and even triggered a big riot, and the crop still didn't grow after the watering. Jake is jailed again, but Lisa visits him and asks him why he doesn't continue with the same method as last time Jake is helpless. Who came into a big rock? In order to calm the public's anger, the police escort Jake to the penal colony to be punished. Driving only a battered old car, he faces to heavily armed armored vehicles. Despite the disparity in equipment, he has the intellectual advantage. Jake slammed on the gas and using the chains on his feet managed to bring about the destruction of both opponents together. However, before he could celebrate, the next opponent appeared with a more powerful weapon, and the audience was once again abuzz. Facing the onslaught of his opponents, Jake delivers a touching life and death speech, but none of them understand him, and Jake is once again in trouble. Just then, a sibling appears on the big screen. It turns out that Lisa has spotted the dealer, successfully germinating outside the White House. She finds the cameraman, and relays the footage to the penal colony, and Jake is saved. The president even appoints him vice president. Later, Jake realizes that the time machine that Mike is talking about is just a sighting car in a playground. 
In the end, Jake decides to give up going back to the past, and is relieved to take up the role of Vice President in this world, devoting himself to leading the people to restore the glory of mankind. By the end of the movie, Jake becomes President, and Lisa becomes First Lady. They have three of the smartest children in the world, and Mike becomes Vice President. However, his children are the three to dumbest in the world.